welcome. Let us go back and look at uh, this exciting protocol called uh, LoRa. We will spend some 10 minutes understanding this uh, protocol, but if you want to know a lot about that protocol, the best possible uh, you know a place where you can look that up is this specification itself. So, let me show you the specification once. This is essentially the 1.1 specification of uh, LoRa. You can see here it is written here 1.1 specification. It was released in 2017. Everything you want to know about LoRa and the LoRa alliance can be read from this uh, major document. Okay, It was released here. Everything you want to know is here Okay, so uh, and it will take us um, quite some time for you to uh, grind this document and uh, understand it uh, thoroughly. What I will do is I will entice you into understanding this uh, LoRa uh, so that further reading will help you to pick up on your own because we cannot obviously cover in a limited amount of time everything. My suggestion is read this document thoroughly to get a grasp on what actually is happening with LoRa. Fine. So, essentially LoRa is something that can be applied into in several areas. Okay. One of the very strong points for LoRa is uh, the fact that it is ultra low power. Okay. It is ultra low power, it is a long range, it can work deep indoor environments, it can penetrate deep indoor uh, places, it is license free very important, it is uh, something that you can mix and match private deployments and public deployments and uh, you get end to end security services. Okay. You get end to end security services because end to end is completely data is confidential okay and uh, it's a uh, it's an amazing thing and finally and uh, last but not the least i would say is that if you deploy a device a lora device um, in the outdoor you can uh, program it uh, over the air okay so that is a very uh, special uh, thing that is firmware upgrade over the air as they call so all these are uh, very good features and their application areas are innumerable you can talk of smart agriculture you can talk of uh, uh, protecting uh, uh, plants you can talk of protecting wildlife you can be talking about smart cities you can be talking about logistics and asset tracking and you can be talking about smart metering where water gas electricity all of them can be applied why all these examples is because of the fact that lora is not great in terms of its uh, offering you high data rates okay it does not but it has this fantastic ability of giving you extremely long range, extremely long range. And when I mean extremely theoretically, you can reach up to an 850 kilometers. Okay. And there was a recent experiment uh, which I can also point you to launch of ice, ice space 19 LoRa balloon flight. Okay. You can see there is lot of information out there here and uh, the distance that it, it traveled. Uh, the distance between the source and the destination between two LoRa devices is uh, was indeed about uh, a, about 800 kilometers or so. So you can see this is uh, LoRa tracker. Please read up. There's so much of information about the range of long range LoRa balloon tracker launch from London. This was a recent article. You can see it was in 2020 uh, and so on. So if you read up, you Google for LoRa helium balloon experiment you actually find that the balloon was launched uh, in several uh, papers you would see that the balloon was launched uh, at uh, something close to about 36 kilometers and uh, it gave a range of roughly uh, 850 kilometers or so. So, you can see balloon technology uh, photos from the launch and uh, a lot of exciting work was done um, and uh, so here uh, you could go and look up not just one article I just mentioned about one article but there are enough number of articles to talk to you to give you yeah you can look up this LoRa world record broken 832 kilometers 517 miles using 25 milliwatt okay. So, this is the experiment I was actually going through I was trying to tell you you can see that the kind of range that LoRa one was trying to provide is uh, quite a significant uh, the number. And uh, you can do a lot of interesting things. Yeah. So this is a post which comes. Who made the world record attempt? You can see that balloon just taking off and starting its ascent. And uh, you can see that if you read this article, it's talking about the gateway which uh, picked up the data packet to break the record. First was 
775 kilometers away in Grenoble, uh, France, and uh, you can see that it actually triggered. And what is the kind of power you are talking of? Uh, hardly anything, right? It is just about 25 milliwatts of uh, power that you are pushing through uh, this uh, system. So, why this is so inspiring is because LoRa gives you that kind of huge range. It is not about data uh, rate, it is not about the amount of payload that it can carry, but the fact that the radio signal can reach this long distance with very small payloads will allow you uh, to build very nice compelling applications. Great. Uh, so, let me go back and tell you a little more about this is fine, but then you need to know a little more about the about the LoRa itself. Okay. So, now you see on the left side I have put devices. Okay. This is typical of what Vasant showed in, in the demonstration. right? Uh, we had uh, LoRa uh, transmitter and a receiver and we showed you that little uh, small video clip and uh, there you could see that there were two devices and even we shared the, the data sheet of that particular uh, LoRa device that we had with us. All right. So, those are essentially this. You can have devices which are A, B and C type of devices or class of devices. So, what is the difference? Essentially, I put down a picture on the extreme left here and this picture tells you all about why these there are different device classes. If you take A, uh, A is shown to the extreme right. The x axis is the downlink communication latency and uh, y axis is simply the number of devices that are here, the, the type of devices that are there. A gives you the highest uh, communication uh, latency because it is A which decides to transmit data to the network server. Now, I will not be talking about gateway because gateway is just a pass through device. It is a pass through device. Simply you can think of something like this. Okay. Without making much noise about the gateway, we should be talking about A connecting directly to network server. This is absolutely important because the fact that authenticity of data of the device and integrity of the data message is actually done by the network server. It is the network server which maintains network uh, key, right? It maintains a, a session key between the gateway and the uh, network server, and therefore uh, uh, gives you gives the uh, device authenticity and provides integrity of the uh, data. Okay, that is sent by these devices either A, B, or C. Similarly, for confidentiality of the data. Uh, the uh, key uh, the application server actually holds that is where the end data is to be consumed. Source is A, B or C any one of these devices. I mean when I say A, B or C I am talking of class of devices. Okay. In class of devices you can have uh, let us say I can put two small classes A1 and A2 or two A1 and A2 are part of belong to a class of device called capital A. Okay, these and why they are uh, called cap, uh, small a1, a, why are they called class A devices? Because they can take the decision on their own of when to transmit, okay, that when to transmit is in their hand. So, they can sleep as long as they like and then they can wake up and then do a transmission okay. and that allows them to essentially uh, you know uh, save a lot of battery life. Look at the picture that I have drawn here. Okay. Here I say about class A, here you do an uplink transmission when we say uplink we talk about device to gateway is called uplink, gateway to device is called downlink. When you talk about class A device you talk about um, uplink transmission, soon after uplink transmission there will be a small delay over which the device shifts to reception mode and wait for a data. If there is any data from the network server. Uh, then the data can be pushed only when here this is important only when A has actually the class A kind of device has transmitted that is only after an uplink transmission the uh, network server can push data back to the uh, end node which means bidirectional communication is uh, initiated by the class A device this is important. Okay. And uh, if there is more data, uh, it can wait for one more slot and then receive it on RX2 and so on. Do not worry about that. Now, class uh, B device is interesting. Class B device does everything that class A does, except for the difference that you can also have network initiated 
uh, waking up ok. So, network can also initiate that means network server can give a nudge at periodic intervals and say hey wake up I have data for you ok. So, that uh, is something that uh, class B devices uh, are expected to honor. Therefore, what happens in terms of communication latency it reduces compared to that of A that is what I have shown here ok. And now class C is even uh, lower latency because the device has no control it is the network that holds control and therefore, C gives you even later lat uh, smaller latency uh, and because it is initiated by the uh, by the network. So, therefore, this is interesting, but while I say this is interesting there is even more interesting thing that I have drawn here. What I have drawn here is I have mixed class A with class B and class C. Look at the power you can have all of them contacting a single gateway or multiple gateways which gateway to choose the devices A1, A2 let us put me here B1, B2, C1, C2 ok. C1, C2, B1, B2 and A1, A2 are actual devices they are class A, class B and class C devices respectively. These 6 devices which a, a gateway they should contact is decided by the network server this is important. So, what are the functionalities of the network server selection of the gateway device is decided by the network server. The LoRa WAN protocol see what I put here is only LoRa protocol I did not put LoRa WAN. LoRa is actually a wireless 5 layer technology LoRa WAN is a MAC layer protocol this is important huh? Do, please differentiate between the MAC and the 5 layer protocols. This is simply LoRa and this is LoRa WAN. The fact that uh, LoRa WAN exists means multiple vendors can uh, work together. Whoever implements LoRa WAN perfectly, vendor A and vendor B, they can mix match and work together. That is the advantage of using LoRa WAN uh, system, which is at the MAC layer. Okay, and um, the uh, network server had does something even more interesting it does what is known as adaptive data rate commands uh, ok for data rate of devices. At what rate should uh, C 1 communicate to gateway uh, B 1 to the gateway A 1 to the gateway can also be decided by the uh, network server ok. I will come to that in a moment, but I just wanted to show you that uh, different classes of devices essentially will have a picture like this. For example, what I showed you here is class A. And if you have to redraw this picture for class B, it is quite uh, simple. I will replace this for me, it is very simple. I will replace this with class B device, and what I will do is I will put back Rx1, actually the same one, then I will put Rx2, and what I will do, I will give a certain delay, and network has to initiate again. Therefore, because it is plus here, do not forget this class B is n device initiates plus network therefore, this R x 2 comes back here and after that there will be an R x 3 also. So, periodically uh, the network can initiate communication back to class B devices and therefore, latency is lower compared to that of class A devices. So, you can redraw pictures like this for other uh, type of uh, uh, the class C devices uh, as well. Great. So, we covered that we covered the gateway we covered the network server and we covered the application server folks everything about LoRa is in this picture you deploy end devices you connect to a gateway you uh, from the gateway you connect to the network server and from the network server you, you connect to the application server. Authenticity integrity support for all the devices at the network server because of the session key network server session key. Uh, the confidentiality essentially encryption decryption of data sent by these devices handled by the application server because the end consuming application is sitting out there. So, therefore, authenticity integrity and confidentiality are guaranteed in LoRa system and therefore, extremely powerful again and extremely feature rich uh, when we talk about LoRa ok. A little more about the the data rates I mentioned to you that LoRa offers you a network server allows you uh, also takes care of ensuring that 
devices communicate, end devices communicate at a particular data rate and how is that done? Before we go into that, first of all let us understand how LoRa modulation works. LoRa modulation is based on chirp spectrum modulation. Essentially this modulation is supported by bats as well as whales. These are also those which actually use chirp uh, spectrum uh, modulation right and here is what the whole picture is. If you consider x axis as f the frequency and the y axis for power spectral density you can see that the spread of energy is like this and there is a small hump here which essentially contains the data and this is where the signal is peaking above the noise and that you know is indeed the point where the data is available ok. The whole bandwidth is 125 kilohertz uh, that is f2 minus f1 is 125 kilohertz uh, and uh, the bandwidth is uh, either 125 kilohertz or uh, 250 kilohertz both bandwidths can be set. Please note I am differentiating the bandwidth of LoRa with respect to the operating center frequency of LoRa. Center frequencies can lie in the 433 in the 868 915 megahertz uh, systems uh, in any uh, frequency band you can take but the bandwidth is limited to 125 or 250 kilohertz uh, ranges. So folks the demonstration we showed you was even more interesting because uh, the demodulation of LoRa is very simple. So what is the gateway doing there you may ask gateway is not doing any magic folks the gateway has the ability to listen to multiple channels from LoRa and decode the system. So the difference between an end device demodulating and a gateway demo demodulating is just that the gateway has multiple receivers, multiple channel receivers. So if you cascade let us say 4 or 5 end devices and put them in reception mode to different frequencies it becomes a gateway. So you can build gateways from even end devices. So essentially I am saying that there is no magic about gateway or anything. In fact even end device can because the demodulation is damn simple. Uh, it is very simple in fact uh, how do you start uh, sending out a preamble 8 up chirps chirp spec spectrum means you will have an up chirp and a down chirp ok. I will not go into the detail but just you can think about uh, up and down chirps 8 up chirps means it is a preamble down 2 down chirps means it is synchronization and 5 up chirps means uh, the data is coming right. So already you know that you are going to pack data with this uh, signal right. Uh, so essentially uh, it is this is what any receiver will have to decode on. Now the data rate itself holds the key to the range very important absolutely critical as far as data rates and range is concerned in LoRa because we spoke even about the uh, experiment uh, done by the things network right uh, the helium uh, experiment balloon experiment and all that with just 25 milliwatts and uh, all that I mentioned. So how is all that possible because you have a very important uh, part in LoRa is about the spreading factors and I want to put this picture right in front of you and ask you to remember this quite well. The uh, spreading factor essentially spreading factor uh, is uh, you call it with there is a name for it ok. So we will uh, without going into the detail I will simply say it is the number of bits per second you can think about it like that ok. Um, you can have spreading factors supported from 10 to 7 so you have 9, 8 and all that. So if you have spreading factor of 10 you will get 980 bits per second but you will get a range of 8 kilometers and the transmitter will be on for 371 milliseconds. If you go down to SF7 you will get 5.4 kilobits per second or 5470 bits per second but your range will come down to 2 kilometers and uh, the air time the time over which the transmitter is on will be about 61 milliseconds. So uh, you can trade the distance uh, to that of the uh, time over which the transmission happens. See obviously this has a merit. Uh, because the transmitter is on for a very short amount of time what will happen to the battery life it will improve ok that is a great news right. Now you can do the following right now we can go back and modify this picture I can do the following I will take the C ok and I will click place it very close to the uh, gateway. Now here you do not you are not worried about range 
okay, let us say this is under 2 kilometer. If it is under 2 kilometer, what will you do? You will set it to SF 7 and therefore, if you set it to SF 7, uh, who will set it? That is the question. Who will set it? The command to set it will be given by the network server. That is the most important thing. Okay, so, you set it to SF 7. That is the function that uh, typically uh, the network server can do and uh, then you can go up, 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 you can go up to 980 bits per second, but you will get 8 kilometers. The theoretical limit of whatever uh, LoRa is supposed to give you is in hundreds of kilometers, we even said that and that is because we are assuming free space path loss, okay, that is important, free space path loss and free space path loss you can think of only happening in space and not in on ground or not on earth because you will have trees, you will have buildings, you will have so many obstacles, you will never get uh, free space uh, on, on anywhere in near the grounds. So, if you go higher and higher, uh, you will definitely get free space and it can support you extremely high uh, data rates. Okay, that is one part. So, the ADR is nothing but adaptive data rate is a command issued by the network server to inform uh, end devices to adjust the uh, spreading factor such that the time over which they transmit uh, can be uh, reduced or increased and uh, can be reduced actually if it is SF7 it will be reduced and, um, and also ensure that you get higher data rates and ensure that the whole system is, uh, is actually adapting based on where these devices are placed and their physical distances from the gateway device. So, that is the important thing. Now, another important point about the uh, about LoRa is about the how long can a signal be emitted on a given frequency. Two terms come to our mind. One term is called the duty cycle. It is usually expressed in terms of uh, 0.1 percent to about 10 percent of time and there is another term which is called dwell time. Dwell time is the time to send the message. Okay. So, you can think about this uh, 61 milliseconds as typically of what the dwell time is and uh, how much time uh, time over overall time that the uh, system uh, can emit is actually the uh, is nothing but the duty cycle. Okay. So, these are two important terms apart from that operator also may bring in a lot of restrictions. For example, operator may say 30 seconds of air time per node per day this is what I will support and he may say as far as downlink is concerned I will allow you only 10 messages per node per day that is also possible. So, all of this is uh, an important aspect in uh, LoRa communication and uh, yeah I think uh, this is a good wind up of uh, what uh, LoRa offers you uplink you will get 64 channels of 125 kilohertz or 8 channels of 500 kilohertz downlink is 8 channels of 500 kilohertz usually. All this information which I put here is actually you can easily uh, read up understand from this centerpiece uh, document which is out here. As you can see if you go through this document you will see the whole lot here. You see here LoRa modulation uh, 868, 433, US 915 and AS 430. LoRa modulation comes in here. LoRa Mac class A, class B, class C we know this very well now. There are applications which you build on top, right? So, it is easy now for you to pick up from here. Bidirectional, what happens in class A? Bidirectional in class B, class C, and so on. Okay. Now, physical message formats, how should an up, uplink uh, message look like? That is given here. How should a downlink message look like is also mentioned here. Okay. Then you have receive windows. I mentioned to you after an uplink transmission, there is a certain amount of delay after which the receive delay 1, uh, you apply de receive delay 1, you allow the system to transmit so that the device uh, class A, class B and class C devices one of them depending on the mode or uh, depending on the class they are can receive data in Rx1 and therefore, uh, the end device receives a slot timing is mentioned here clearly. And uh, yeah, so then uh, MAC message formats are there, there is MAC header, there is MAC payload and then there is the MAC footer, uh, MAC trailer as well. Yeah, so MAC header field, data messages, yeah, 
So, you I would strongly encourage you uh, to look at uh, so there you are this is about ADR all about ADR how does the network server give a ADR command back to the end device that will be a question for you. You can see it is it written here ADR is mentioned here and uh, you could go through that in, in detail you will understand about the adaptive data rate control in the frame header. Okay. Then there are other uh, important fields which you may also want to pick up. Uh, please do read the document and you will definitely be able to understand several parts of what uh, this document is after you have listened to uh, this particular uh, discussion I have had with you. I also mentioned to you about over the air updates uh, which are possible and how a node can join the network uh, by someone goes and deploys a node and uh, you want to join it into the network that is quite simple in uh, LoRa where because it supports over the air joining and uh, there are frame options for that and so on. So, folks this is a wind up of uh, LoRa and uh, do look up the uh, story uh, the Google links that I showed you and read this document in thorough detail you will understand LoRa it is very promising. I would say uh, you must seriously consider LoRa as an option uh, in several applications. LoRa does not stop there I will put one important picture it will connect to your other uh, story of other protocols that we discussed. You see what happens is if you look at the application server you can run broker here you remember the broker we also called it the server you can have MQTT clients MQTT clients running here folks. So, you see you can mix match different protocols MQTT can happily run off from the application server. So, um, if you are talking about a LoRa device uh, class A device and an MQTT system which is uh, either publishing or subscribing to data may be subscribing data from let us say one of the LoRa devices then it is the application server which can nicely interface to the broker and uh, the broker or server we should call it server and the server can uh, use the MQTT protocol to uh, publish the data to the end system which has asked for data. So, a lot of interesting possibilities exist uh, and so mix matching these protocols becomes absolutely critical. I hope you would got, got a overview of uh, LoRa and LoRaWAN protocol uh, I think it would be sufficient in detail for you to read further and uh, experiment all by yourself in this very exciting protocol. Thank you very much.